to know where Hi, good is. evening. Welcome to Neighborhood News. We're back from a, a little hiatus there during yes, the summer. Yes, I, so. I think uh, um, two weeks. Yeah, it was about two weeks. So, so okay. we deserve two weeks, two week <laughs> vacation too. Um, so we are back again with uh, one more show of the uh, Neighborhood News, and like happens every time. Sejam bem-vindos ao nosso programa de notícias da sua vizinhança, todas as terças-feiras, às sete da noite, no canal, no canal 95. Um, se está a ver este programa e não é terça-feira, uh, o nosso novo programa uh, estará um, no ar na terça-feira, às sete da noite. And, um, like we do in every show, we yeah. pretty much anything going on out there. Uh, did you heard anything from other neighborhoods about the uh, any event? No, I mean you guys just had your your movie night, St. Anne's, and and you guys. Yes. Um, but as far as anything coming up in the near future, I mm -hmm. haven't heard anything. Um, I uh, having the our uh, block party, um, the Flint Pride Days that would started. Our I believe in 1990, uh, Katia Saad started the uh, Flint Pride Days, just getting the kids together in the Quickishan School uh, yards. Um, and then we took over and we moved into the night, which we still have things to entertain the kids, but we uh, welcome the adults to come too. Really, we have live bands and, and all of that. And that's going to be on the 26th, the last Saturday of the month. Um, we are working um, we're going to have a couple events coming from new jersey um supposedly uh, they got recommended to us and um we have moment of clarity um it's kids from durfee uh, hi that um, they put a band together and they do an excellent job and so they will be there to uh, playing at six o'clock cool. uh, then we have a portuguese singer and the the uh, the bands um no pagode uh, came from um, New Jersey. They're going to close the uh, the night. We're going to have um, uh, Cap Verdeum food, um, a restaurant from um, outside the city. Um, purchase a, a vendor, so they, they're going to be there with the with the uh, Cap Verdeum food. We're going to have the Brazilian food with the, all, all the good shish kebabs and all of that. And we're going to have the Portuguese food, which is not going to, uh, you know, you, you're going to find everything from melasadas to cassola sandwich and cerise sandwich, all, all the good stuff. Cool. So that's the uh, Saturday, the 26th, and everybody, it's um, welcome to come. It's a free event. You just have to uh, um, buy the food at whatever you you cool. on the mood for. Sounds good. So... Um, on the meantime, um, you guys had the uh, done the uh, the um, yeah, put up the the banners. And yep, we put up our banners. We got uh, roughly thirty of them. We originally had fifteen, uh, and they were donated. And the other fifteen we got donated also. Um, so through that grant, we were able to get fifteen more. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we've had a lot of um, compliments about them. So it's uh, nice. I think it does improve certain, mm -hmm. you know, the aesthetics. So it's uh, uh, shows a little bit of pride. Yes, yes. No, and, so. and uh, again, was a was a good uh, was a good. Uh, um, you guys did a, a good job there. You had a fun day together with with that. Yeah. Um, and we are on the process because at the uh, top lots at Quickishan, Mississauga, the, the, it was so terrible that you know how you you think one thing when yeah. you start construction, and by the time you um, you want to fix this, and then you want to fix that, so. The good thing is that I got the kids, the uh, youth court um, kids uh, from the DA's office in New Bedford. They, c they came down twice. We had uh, <coughs> some volunteers, uh, neighbors volunteering. We had the Fall River Cadets kids uh, came down too. So we paint all the fence. We paint all the poles, uh, the basketball court, uh, mm -hmm. the basketball courts. So we are just finalizing now um, so we could um, you know, cut the ribbon um, for the new park, um, the new playgrounds. We asked the city for a couple of things that they took out of Kennedy Park. They old, but they fine for for who don't have anything. We can use use that's toys, no, right? That's good. So we're gonna have a couple of new things on the playground there. Um, one thing that we had there, the poles already, but we didn't have a net, was a volleyball. So we got the volleyball net to put it up. And uh, soon we're going to announce and we're going to dedicate it, uh, the, 
the court to uh, Cathy Assard, uh, uh, founder and, and um, association founder and the mother of all neighborhoods. That's how our friend um, Natalie called uh, Cathy. Yeah. Um, so we had, we had a plaque uh, made. Uh, we're going to place it on the fence. And I came to find out um, through the park department that um, it was already dedicated to her, but the name was never placed at the park. Yeah. So we had the plaque uh, done, um, uh, plaque it's already done, we're gonna uh, set up a date and we're gonna do the opening of the, uh, of the park. So it was a good very thing, good. it was a it's very nice good script. use of the money that we got, the grant that we got for it. Yep. And it's one more park done uh, on the city. That's good. Very good, so well, we have our a, guest. Yeah, we have a guest tonight, Councillor Linda Pereira. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you, Linda, My for pleasure coming. to be here. And, and that is wonderful. That park is well deserved. Yeah, it yes, is. it is. Well it's deserved. I mean, if if you know, all these parks need the advocacy, mm -hmm. and you're advocating for that, and you know, that's great. Yes. Because if not, it might yeah, not get one it. One at a know. time. But they are so bad that you know, by the time we try, and we have, we want to fix this. Then we, oh my God, this will look good. Oh my God, we need to fix this. Oh, we need to fix this, yeah. and. And the money that we went right overboard, the money that we yeah, got, yeah. money was just to start. Was like a kick, you know, yeah. to start. Yeah. But um, I'm happy with the uh, with the project. I'm happy. Yeah. And um, Linda is here, and this time and, and she's not going to escape. Yeah. This time we're going to talk <laughs> politics. Well, you know, well, last well, time okay. she was very nice. Well, well, talking. well wait a minute. We, we don't want. She I just got, she politics. just uh, she's still recovering here. It's so okay. We'll, we'll talk um, about we that at the time. end. But we'll we give her a time. We want to. We want to talk. We want to let she, everybody know she's that not, she's not running away today without no. talking oh, yeah. politics. Yeah, at the end, we can do that. But I know a lot of folks, <laughs> uh, Linda, have yes. reached out to you um, and wanted to know how you were. So I um, figured this is a great opportunity to let people know. Look, she looks great. She's, and, she does. And um, you know, Thank it you. seemed everything went by. You know, you recovered probably quickly, more quickly than someone else that would have had the same. Um, the doctor said he was thing. pretty impressed at yeah. how. Um, how quickly I've recovered and you know I've lived in this community my entire life but it was certainly reaffirmed to me why I live in this community when you do something good and people say oh congratulations that's one thing but when you have a difficult time um, in your life I mean you have an aneurysm it could burst and if it does you could die you could um, you know, have suffer other uh, consequences. So I, I thank God that uh, it was found and, and I had surgery. But the outpouring of support from people, the cards, the flowers, the, the plants, edible arrangements, uh, fruit baskets, um, postings on Facebook, prayers and prayers and prayers. And I am a firm believer in the power of prayer. And, and I really believe that my recovery, as, as quick as it's been, has been due to the people of this community. Through their prayers, their well wishes, their thoughts. I'm usually not at a loss for words, but I am totally at a loss for words on how to thank everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to thank people. I, I got a card from a woman who I had been to her home because there was a flooding and there was mulch in her washing machine. She's an older woman and she took the time to send me a card and put, remember I had the mulch in my washing machine. <laughs> and it's like, my God, yeah. mm -hmm. that was a little thing that you do for somebody, you know, and she was praying for me. It, it's, I graduated from high school 43 years ago and I got a, a card from the Holy Union Sisters with signatures, a paper with signatures of all the sisters who had me on their prayer line and were praying for me. Wow, that's awesome. I, I, you just, it, it's overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I mean, my husband and my kids couldn't have been any better. I was never at the hospital alone. Either my husband was there, or one of my daughters, or both of my daughters, they'd kind of swap off. Um, and ironically, my mother's name was Eliza, and my mother-in-law's name was Lydia. And my RNs, one of them was Eliza Zimberman, yeah. and the other one was Lydia, and I can't recall her last name. But um, when I saw them, and you know, you're kind of under anesthesia, and you're looking, and I'm like, what's your name? And she said, <laughs> Eliza, I was, what's your name? Lydia. 
I, I felt like the sense of calm, mm -hmm. like I had two angels here and everything was going to be okay. Mm -hmm. cool. And then when I went up to see the doctor, of course, you know, <laughs> I brought Masa for the people at the hospital. I brought Masa for his office staff, Masa for the doctor. And, and Dr. Ogilvy said, is this from Lou's Bakery? Because I hear that Four River, they have, and I was like, ironically, it was, you know. <laughs> um, I go to a lot of the bakeries for sweet bread. They're all good. It just happened that Louie had gone um, to Lou's to pick up some, some sweet bread in the morning. And they kind of laughed, you know. But that's us in Four River. We're, that's how we are. We're, we kind of promote our area. and yeah. so. Um, but it's great to be back. It's great to be back um, stronger and better and not feeling as dizzy and, um, you know, not worried about raising my blood pressure at a council meeting and worry that, <laughs> you know, the aneurysm would explode. I had uh, for a few weeks before my surgery that I knew it. I couldn't. The only one that knew was my husband. I didn't share it with anybody, not even my kids. I didn't want anybody to worry. Yeah. But my husband would be like, you need to calm down. Yeah. <laughs> at one point, I got up during a meeting, went outside, you know, went in the back and just said, oh, you know, yeah. tried to do a little bit of that yeah, yoga yeah, thing. Yeah. Oh, relax, <laughs> relax. Um, but no, back, ready to uh, work and, and was harder really, than ever. And re it was really the tough week, uh, the, the week, that the last week that you attend. I know. It was the week before all... You yeah, know, the, yeah, the whole budget, the yeah. whole budget no, thing. So, yeah. with so many questions, <laughs> with so so much to do, and there so was. little time uh, to do it. But uh, we are glad that you're back. And, and you well, know, if I'd have been there, my vote would have been a no vote on the budget. I just, um, in my heart and in my mind, I have to vote that way. What I feel in my heart and my mind, and I just don't think that the figures are accurate figures. Mm -hmm. I just don't. Uh, it's balanced on paper with numbers that are used, but are those numbers legitimate numbers? They're not. And you know, some of the people at the fire department, it's that, that we've laid off some firefighters. I gotta tell you, there's a firefighter that got laid off. I had him when I worked at the Child Development Center over 40 years ago. I had him when he was three years old. And through the years, I've seen this young man, you know, occasionally here and there, and he had a phenomenal mother. You know, she'd drop him off at daycare and pick him up. And I just thought, she w this kid was impeccable all the time. I mean, I used to really look at this woman and say, wow, you are a great mother. You know, there was just something that connected me with that young man. And he even did uh, karate stuff for a while and taught kids. He's got children, uh, a wife, and they're a great family. And I can't help but know that you've made decisions. You've been a firefighter for four years. You've made decisions for your, for your family based on your finances. And to have the rug just pulled out from under you is, um, how do you feel? I don't think that people get it unless your feet are in those shoes. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully we'll be able to work on um, getting the fire department up to the complement they need in police. Because people are not gonna come into Fall River if they don't feel safe. And if you don't have the right fire, the right policing, then your car insurance goes up. Your homeowner's insurance goes up. Those are things that you need to look at as well. Mm -hmm. and, and revenue is so important. Last year's budget, the mayor put $100,000 in the budget because we told him, and I had a conversation with him, we need for economic development. We need growth. We need to market the city. We need to put positive, a positive spin on what we have here. For example, redo those trolley cars. You don't want to have a rickety old junky trolley car, yeah. but redo them. Whether it be Diamond or some other school or auto body mechanics, and put on the, the, the trolley spruced up by whomever. Mm -hmm. Every year let somebody else advertise it, what have you. <coughs> and maybe talk to Jack Sprager, the president of BCC, um, you know, get, go to UMass Dartmouth and, and talk to uh, Davina Grossman, the chancellor there. Is there a history class that runs in the summertime? Would somebody be able to get a credit to ride a high school student? Would somebody be able to get on a trolley and talk about the history of Fall River? Mm -hmm. You know, let's show the positive. Sometimes we're our own worst enemy because there is a lot going on. And, and uh, now that you talk about the trolleys, um, I use the trolleys a lot because I take the kids from the, the schools into um, tours. Um, I just did the Spiritual Center School tour um, with the Portuguese monuments on the city for their Portugal. Um, and I take them to the um, bio reserve, the bio -reserved and, and all of that. And in the conversation with the driver, 
he told me that the Saturday before, he had a wedding in Plymouth. Our trolleys travel to Plymouth in a wedding. And the sad part is the money that the trolleys are raised are being using for something else. So here we, here we are. They are you know, falling, falling apart, but they're making money, and the money is not being spent on them. That's something yeah. that yeah, see, we I, need to I, look at. I would think that money would have stayed in public works. Because exactly. that's part of their. I mean, it doesn't you know, matter if it's $500, yeah. it's $200, whatever it is. Yeah. Let's keep it so we can do something and, and, and upgrade the, the, the Well, trolley. and if you're going to rent the, car or the trolley for any, you know, a purpose like that, yeah. you want to make sure that it's presentable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, right. you yes, want to make yes. sure that it's... But see, Carlos, even what you are doing with this, the students like Day of Portugal going around to all the Portuguese monuments or going to the bioreserve or what have you, whatever write-up you have on all of that, that this is about this is the, the facts on every single monument or this is the mm -hmm. fact if that was shared with other groups and other groups could use that other neighborhood groups maybe uh, in in uh, john you're you have Laterno. no uh, no we're green we're you're green. at green green yep. has yep. you're at green maybe that would be something that that mm -hmm. neighborhood uh, yeah. group could do and i think if you had the neighborhood groups working together mm -hmm. on issues like that like sharing those types of ideas I think that would be that would be great, mm -hmm. um, you know, to do things like that and, too. And the kids, the kids love the, uh, the 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 rights, not just the right on the trolley, but the idea. And, and we talk about the monuments, how the monuments got there, uh, the the old Fall River Flint Fall River Station, how they started it back in 1910, oh, and and all that history. Um, we bring them downtown. We bring them to the the gates of the city. We bring them to the um, the river. You yeah. know, uh, behind the mills there, and 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 all of that, and that's something they will never forget. And you know what? Even to have somebody from the history club, like Stephanie Corey, does work mm -hmm. with the history club, mm -hmm. and I've been to a couple of the talks that she's had because it interests me, and I want to know more about my community. And I was amazed at the number of people that were at the library mm -hmm. uh, when she gave a talk. But she has all that too, and I'm sure would we'll be more than willing to share that so that other kids could see it. That's a great thing to do with some of the seniors at some of the senior centers that one day get on a trolley and let's go down memory lane and look at this. And you may hear things from some of the seniors that yeah, we sure. didn't yeah, know. We didn't know. Yeah, yeah. My, my uh, center, the senior center, I um, take them every year to a nursing home uh, for Christmas. So what they do is they, they just, they made stuff like the, the soap, they put the soap inside of something. Oh, they, nice. You know, so, and that it's gifts. So I take them before Christmas with, on the trolley and we visit the three or four nursing homes on the city. And they get so happy because everybody comes to the big room and then we, we arrive there and they talk and they hug and, you know, and they get, they leave the, the blankies, they make blankies, the ladies make blankies and everything. And, and it's, it, it's really But a nice. lot of people really don't nice know, yeah. a lot of people don't know that those are all of the things that you mm -hmm. do. Yeah. I mean, you just talked about your um, neighborhood group that the Flint Pride Days is going to be on June 26th. Um, and I'll call Ricky Tim or Didi from the Cambodian um, group within the city yeah. because I think they'd like to participate in something mm -hmm. like that. But if they don't know about it, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I'll certainly call them and say this may be something mm -hmm. that you want to go to because I think the more cultures we have in the community, mm -hmm. the more we share, yeah. the more we understand of each other's culture, the better a community we become. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that some of the things that we talk about, it's this city needs ha to learn how to generate money other than going into the pockets of taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And that's something we need to learn. And I think that people also in Fall River need to become better involved. You know, we have all been talking about this pay as you throw. And my opinion is that when we first had pay as you throw come to the council chambers for discussion, we didn't really know that it was for discussion. Yeah. It was um, part of a committee that I serve on with Councilor Mayoza that everybody was coming in to talk about these different options. Not that we wanted pay as you throw or privatization or this or that. They were just coming to give all the ideas. And I know that a lot of people watch on TV, but there was hardly anybody there in the audience. And 
in those meetings, we were allowing everybody, come on up, you have a question, no. come on up and ask it. I think Mr. Silva was there and, and uh, asked questions. Sure you had gone yeah, um, yeah. to a couple to ask questions. But then, you know, there's these people that'll say, well, you know, we didn't want this, we didn't want this. Well, then, I didn't think we were going to get it because the mayor was adamant, pay as you throw us off the table. Yeah. Okay. It made sense to me because I can't see people paying money for a bag that they're going to stick into a barrel that we paid two and a half million dollars for. Yeah. Usually, pay as you throw in other communities, the bag is on the street, mm -hmm. not in a barrel. Yeah. So that's kind of confusing to me. Um, I don't think that it, the process was long enough for people. Um, you know, but there's things like the increase of water, the increase of sewer. I mean, I would much rather have had you say to me, instead of paying $35 for stormwater fee, you're going to pay $45. Okay, so in three months, it's costing me $10 more. At least I know what that is. Water, sewer, I don't know. And people that own in, uh, tenement properties, you don't know what your, your tenants are using, but you can't do that because you said it was illegal. And it wasn't illegal. The stormwater fee was implemented because we had to pay the CSO loan. Time to pay the piper came up. And if we would have raised water and sewer, you'd have been paying $9. And that people couldn't afford. Businesses couldn't afford it. And then it was decided that the fairest way is that everybody pay $35 and businesses pay five cents a square foot of impervious soil. That's how it was. And, and it was done because it was the fairest way. It's done in Newton. I own uh, a piece of property in Florida. I've been, paying, I've been paying that fee for years down there. So it's not illegal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not illegal. So you're not going to raise it if you said, oh, that's illegal. Now you don't want to raise it. But to me, it would have let people know, this is how much more I have to come up with. But, but you know, we have a lot of water. Water is, is a, an asset in Fall River. Why are we not going after businesses that are large water consumers mm -hmm. to get them to come in. And, and I did have a conversation with Steve Grossman, and we were talking about the fact that manufacturing is kind of coming back and that we'd be good for that. Why not have some of these mills in Fall River be dormitories for people who want to come to BCC yeah. from outside of the area? I went to a two-year college in Boston, and you know I lived on campus, but where are they going to live when, when they come down here? Why not have one of these mills converted into dorms? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, let's start thinking of other ways. Kids that go to college usually work part-time. They like to go out. They like, you know, they yep. spend money. They're, they're young. They're yeah. energetic. Yep. And it changed the dynamic of, of any town. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, you're right. It's just thinking of these different things and then, I think, following through. Because all too often that doesn't happen. And then, then the next big thing is this. And then we move on to this. And... So you're right. I mean, you look at Fall River, and you have the old Dave's Beach. Yeah. That drives me absolutely crazy, yeah. that there is no place in Fall River where somebody can go and swim. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Dave's Beach, I had gotten back in the 90s a $500,000 grant from Wildlife and Fisheries. Matter of fact, when I told Senator Rodericks about it when he got in, he ended up putting the floater ramp in, got money for the floater ramp. You have a floater ramp there. Redo, you can get a grant, redo the parking lot there. Yeah. You go to Swansea, yeah. is it Pierce, uh, Pierce Beach too? Uh, no, in Swansea? Somerset. But Somerset. I think it's the town beach. Swansea town Somerset. beach. Somerset, yeah, down the Grove. Yeah, it's, I think it's called the town beach. Or um, Long Pond. Yeah. It's $15 for residents, $35 for non residents. So for $15 or that you would be able to have a beach here, What's going on with who owns the land on the side? What's happening? I mean, there's something that you have in Fall River that you could no, it is fix. It's plenty of land it's, there. It's, it's like land the, uh, there, and my uncle owned a house years ago on that pond in Westport, and the, and the water's fine. The water's you know? fine. So it, it's, yeah, I, I don't know why something like that couldn't be done, because it would be something nice for us here, and mm -hmm. even the surrounding towns would come. I mean, I have all the plans at home. It was to put the floater ramp in. It was to re-asphalt the parking lot. It was to put in, I was having Diamond do some of the metal shop, doing some grills, some stand-up grills, so people yeah. were able to cook out. Um, so and, and all that then will bring events yeah. to that location. Yeah. Yeah. And when you bring lo events to the, that location, now you have the boats coming in, you know, and, yeah. and, and but, towns, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Westport and Tiverton are on that pond. 
But I'm, I'm wondering, is that, you were talking about you have the plans, is that something that, like the ramps are free, just like the one at Battleship Cove or near Remy's, is that, that, is that state owned, those ramps? No. Or do we, we own them? I'm not sure about the one there that the state owns that, but even the ramp that they have down near Remy's, yeah. if you go to the ramp um, in, in Portsmouth under the bridge there, if yeah. you go to the ramp in Swansea, you have to pay to park your car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. We don't even have that here. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're um, right. So, th no, that's what I'm thinking too with, yeah. So a lot charge. of people will come, you know, and, and go into, I think that we should have um, availability in the waterfront to be able to dock boats. We've been trying to do that for four years. Yeah. Why can't people get slips and dock boats there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why can't you get off of a boat and come on to land? Mm -hmm. uh, it makes no sense. But if you drove over the Braga Bridge or the Veterans Memorial Bridge and you saw all these boats in the water, you think, wow, life, this, yeah. that. Yeah. What are we going to do with that waterfront? Are we going to wait till 79 is completed? And then yeah. well, that should be something we're working yeah. on today. Yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. And, and, you know, I don't see that happening. I, I see that we're always behind stuff, behind stuff. And now we're putting everything on the hand of this new person that's going to be in charge of tourism, uh, well, which we don't know. I, I, <laughs> I think it's going to be a combination which, of both, right? I think it's going to be a combination of, um, of a position. Yeah. I think it's going to be somebody that you want to go out there to market the city, mm -hmm. to promote the city. Um, you want to be able to have somebody who's, who's really good with the computer who can develop a program into the computer. So if you go on the Forever website and I put, you know, um, manufacturing, what is made in Fall River? There are things that are made in Fall mm -hmm. River. People might want to go to uh, to Airport Road, to the linen shop that's up there that has phenomenally beautiful yeah. um, linens and things like that. But there are things that are manufactured here that um, promote. I mean, I'd like to see everything in Fall River sold on a label of made in the USA and everything that we sold be USA products yeah. mm -hmm. because you might get people to want to come down especially around the holidays yep. I'm gonna shop I'm gonna shop and I'm gonna invest mm -hmm. in my country yeah. and come down and buy stuff that's made yeah. um, in the United States mm -hmm. but I think that you know if you put in auto body all these auto body areas would put in you put in restaurants all these restaurants would come up and if you wanted to go into that particular website you could what is happening in the city Narrow Center for the Art has things. You just had a movie night. St. Anne's just had a movie night. There are car shows that go on in the city. Yeah. Um, the Historical Society has things that go on. The Preservation Society have things that go on. But nobody knows about them because it's not publicized. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've said that I'd like to see a sign on each side of City Hall that promoted the events that are going on. How many feasts do we have in the summer months? Yeah. Um, and, what you know, kids that graduate from school, give me some of the colleges that these kids are attending. Congratulations to our graduates who will now be attending Brown University, Harvard, MIT. Because you know what? The fact is we have students yeah, that are attending those. Yeah. I have a, a friend of mine whose daughter, Olivia, just graduated from MIT. And she was one of the top 10 at Durfee. And I can't believe that she's graduating. They're having an event for her this weekend, a little family uh, get together. Um, but she's one of ours, brilliant, brilliant girl. And we do have that, so many that we have. And I don't think that we promote that. Even remember on um, 24, the truck that rolled over? There was a girl, uh, a, a gentleman, and this girl that saved them. This girl is uh, the grandchild of a man that I knew that was politically involved. Her uncle works at City Hall, I think and we're, 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 she saved this woman, and here she is going to be an <laughs> RN. Yay! <laughs> Promote well, them. Well, see, you were right. She didn't talk about it. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what do you want me to talk about? So she, she <laughs> wouldn't be here for next week. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime. Have a good night.